Welcome back, everyone, to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin. He is Gordon. Flow Track Podcast at gmail.com is the email address. Talking European Championships today, Gordon. They've already started. Did the marathons this morning. We're going to run through some of the top events. We're going to have a draft. We're going to pick which European Championship event or events we want to see the most because we got some stars who are still going after medals. Um, if you're watching in the chat, feel free to comment. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube page, do that as well, too. Colt is producing. Gordon, how are you doing, sir? Not doing good. I had a weird way to wake up this morning. Very weird. Mm. I was sleeping in my bed normally. And then... okay. I felt something on my face, and it was a spider crawling on my face. Whoa! Whoa! That I woke up to. How big? I quickly brushed it off, went back to bed, napped another twenty minutes, and now I'm ready for the podcast. How big of a spider? So that rumor that you eat like ten spiders in a year? Yeah, that's not true. That might be true. No, that really might be true because I had a close call. <laughs> Give me the size of the spider. How big of a spider are we talking? So I didn't see the spider. I felt the spider on the face. And then I brushed it away. But, you know, I don't know how. I don't All right. Know, hold on a second. A couple centimeters. Colt, do we believe this story at all now? He didn't Is see it. Is this a dream spider or a real spider? That's it the was question. not a dream spider. It was a real feeling on the face. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a real spider. It's not. It's one of those ghost spiders. It was a real spider. <laughs> what is a ghost spider? I don't know. Well, like a ghost spider is like it feels like a spider's on your face, but it's not really. Yeah. You know, gotcha. there's times okay. you feel like something's touching you, but it's not. It's just like your skin creating the sensation. Yeah. This was real. All right. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Plan? What can you do? Okay. There's no like spider spray for your bed, is there? <laughs> they have like off repellent, but for spiders and beds? I mean, you could just do general pest control. You'll catch a lot of those guys. Yes, I could do that. I did have a cool. pest control Furiously guy come to my Googling house. Spider. Sorry, sell, sell me pest control. I was like, no, I'm good. Maybe this was his way mm. of getting back at me. Ooh, so. he threw some through the window. Yeah, he probably what can I sp- what can I spray on my bed according to Google to keep spiders away? Essential oils. How many essential oils okay. do you have? Uh, what's the definition of an inessential oil? Unessential. I have a lot of inessential uh, olive oil. I think would be inessential, although it is delicious. Okay. Uh, what does it say? Peppermint is said to be the most effective essential oil for deterring spiders. You can simply mix Peppermint? several drops it with some water. In a spray bottle and spray it around the room. Spiders really don't like the smell. So they'll vacate and steer clear. So I was going to just peppermint patties and put it around my bed. Sp- spray the exterior, then go through your house and just knock down any webs you see with a broom. I think you'd be good. All right. See, that's freaky, though. Look at that photo. Like, imagine that thing crawling on your face when you wake up. That mm. is not, you don't want that. That's no, what happened don't. to me this you morning. Don't. I almost died. I don't... We would have had to end the podcast, and you would just have to have been solo for the rest of the time. So, luckily, I would do that. Just, just FYI, if away. that does happen, if something does happen to Gordon, I will continue to do it for the rest of the time. It's on would your you legs. do like a in memoriam podcast for me? Yeah, of course, of course. Do you remember when we had? Didn't I have a spider incident? It was like crawling on my computer, and then I like went crazy on it, and I smacked yeah, it. I think. Yeah, so I remember that. That was like a year ago. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Colt, if Colt remembers, it's true. Maybe it's Me, the same spider. Memory is foggy. Yeah. All right. So European Championships. We got a lot of big-name athletes. And a great segue there, right? That's why I get paid the big bucks here. I'm just going to name some people. Mondo Duplantis, Femke Bowl, Jakob Ingerbertson, Carson Warhol, Marcel Jacobs, Keely Hodgkinson, Laura Muir. We got – like six or seven storylines that are potentially very interesting. And you could have other events in there too as well. You could talk about Jake Whiteman running the 800. Um, women's five could be pretty interesting as, as well too. But let's draft these in order of m- what you're most interested 
in seeing. Um, so I'll let you go first. So you can pick an athlete, you can pick an event. It's, it's up to you how you want to do this. I mean, I would say the, the number one pick in this what are you most excited for draft has to definitely be Jakob Ingebrigtsen. I mean, he's going for the 15-5 double. Everyone is scared of him because they're all dodging the 15 or dodging the 5. I don't even know. It's just, like, ridiculous. You looked at uh, the top five finishers at World Champs. What was the order of the finish? It was Whiteman, Ingebrigtsen. Mm -hmm. Who got third? Katir? Who got Katir. fourth was Garcia Romo, right? Yep. And fifth was Kerr? Or yeah. the other way around? There's no Kerr. Oh, that's right. There's no Kerr in the 15. There's no Katir in the 15. There's no Whiteman in the 15. What's going on here? They'd be scared of Jakob Ingebrigtsen. So in this situation, I think it's going to be interesting because I think Jakob's going to win easily, but it's going to be like a statement win. And I think he should do like a celebration of like, where is everybody? Like looking around, like the meme mm -hmm. of John Travolta in, um, <laughs> in the, the, when he's in the room looking around, where is everybody? Or yeah. Will Smith yeah, yeah. in the empty room. That's going to be Jakob Ingebrigtsen in the 1500 because all the best runners are not racing him for various reasons. Well, you just explained why this should not be the number one pick because he is going to be – Unopposed, basically. Katir is in the five. Katir is in the five, which, all right, true. cool. He's still there. He picked an event. You go over to the 15. Yeah, there's some guys who might be able to mix it up a little bit, but it would be a massive upset if he loses the 1500. My expectation is he's going to cruise in both of these events. I do think the main matchup everybody wanted to see was Whiteman versus Ingebrigtsen because there weren't many upsets at World Championships. That was one of the few upsets. They have an opportunity to run it back with medals on the line. Whiteman instead is running the 800. I think that's a big blow in terms of the interest level. I think it would be awesome. To, I mean, Whiteman's still in really good shape. It's, he got bronze in, in, in Birmingham at Commonwealth, but he was in the mix there with 100 to go. And the guys then he, he won the 1K were, at, at Monaco. Lest we forget, he won the 1K of Monaco. I like that. Gordon, I want you to remember that stat forever. And he won the 1K. But yeah, he's in good shape. He's fit. I, I think in a perfect world where we had more coordination, we, they'd run this back, and it would be awesome to see. But we're not going to get it, which is why I, I can't put it number one. So I'm glad that you drafted that one. That was not going to be my top pick. My top pick is a, a transformational athlete. But he has something to prove. Because he got seventh at the World Championships. And that's Karsten Warholm. Ooh. In the Formula Hurdles. Now, this is Karsten versus the clock here. If he's anywhere near his form. You know, Rob Benjamin's not running the European Championships. Dos Santos is not running the European Championships. I'm just excited that he's back. Because I thought, hey, this is probably going to be it. He took a shot. At Worlds, didn't work out. Now he's going to rest up and get going. But that's just not that's not Warholm's MO, right? This is the guy who in 2020 kept racing, even though there was nobody who was within a couple seconds of him on the track. Like, you know, he was just going for it. Uh, didn't really take any sort of downtime. And I just want to see where he's at. And I, I think for him, unless he gets injured, which is an obvious bad thing, it's a win-win. Because I think he can, he's going to be able to get a couple races under his belt. If he runs super fast, everyone's thinking, all right, here he comes again. Worlds was just because he didn't have the fitness. Um, and if he you know, runs 47 high or something, he probably could still get the win against this field. So my number one pick, just seeing where Carson Warholm is at. Because he is, he is that exciting. Okay, you... Criticize my overall pick because you said it's not good because Jakob is just going to win because he's so much better yeah. than everyone because all the best are dodging. 
Yet then you follow up with the number two pick with Carson Warholm, who's in the exact same situation from the exact same country of Norway. Not in the exact same who's situation. Basically, he, did, he didn't get gold and silver in Eugene. He was hurt in Eugene. We have no idea how he's going to respond. That's the intrigue. Seeing where he's yeah, at. Yeah, no, you know he's going to win. No, I don't. And if he wins, you know? there's a lot of different degrees of winning. Jakob, we know the degree of winning. It's going to be total dominance. What if Warholm comes back and drops a low 46? Is that on the table? Because that certainly changes how we think about the event going into next year. This is different. Because Worlds and because the injury is it's totally different. You're right in terms of it's one person versus the clock. It's different sprint races versus distance races because it's not as if Jakob's going to go out there and run. Well, actually, he should do this. Run 328, 327, run 1245, right? If he does that, then I agree with you. Then your number one pick will be well worth it. But I think Warholm's injury changes this because we just don't know what, he, what he's going to be capable of. I just feel like we're in a Kevin Durant, Greg Oden situation. Well, we'll see who made the best decision. <laughs> or we're in a we're in a Markel Fultz, Brandon Ingram. Sure. I mean, J- Jason Tatum, Markel Fultz, Brandon Ingram, Ben Simmons. We'll see who made the right decision. Who got? Yeah. Who made the right pick? I I I don't think the Carson Wilson race is going to be that exciting. I think it's going to be a boring forty-eight low win. Name the last. Name the last boring. Well, if he runs forty-eight low, he's not going to win. Because Happio is in there, and he he's forty seven mid guy, so he's gonna ha- and and Capello's in there as well, so he's gonna need to run faster than that. Name the last boring Carson Warholm race. Trick question. You can't. He doesn't run boring races. They don't exist. He had a boring like open four hundred once. I remember he ran like forty five seconds. That's an open four hundred. When when there's hurdles on the track, it's interesting with Carson Warholm. It's gonna be interesting again. Fair I'm enough. feeling great about my pick. In fact, I'm gonna keep track of these picks now because I'm gonna beat you. By so much, I want a <laughs> physical record of this. So, return of Carson Warholm goes to Kevin. Uh, Jakob's double goes to Gordon. And you have the next pick, sir. Go ahead. So, the next pick in the 2022, what does Gordon and Kevin like most about Europeans as Americans? Is <laughs> going to be Femke Bulls 400 meter, 400 meter hurdle double. I want to see this because I want to see what it looks like. I want to get a little taste of what this type of double is. We don't see it that often. I mean, the only double, this double, the only double I remain, I remember of this is when Ashley Spencer attempted it at the 2016 Olympic trials. That's the only thing. And she, it was, she just did it because she was trying to give herself two opportunities to make a team. Um, but we've never seen one of the best athletes in the world do this type of double. Maybe we have, I don't remember it because according to you, I've only been watching track for 10 years, but a decade. Uh, Solid well, decade. I'm just excited to see how it unfolds. I think she will be the clear favorite in both, obviously. And if she can come out of this with a double win, Sydney's going to see that and be like, I can do that. I think it's possible. So Femke's going to open the door for the world to be like, Let's make 400, 400 hurdle doubles a reality. And it starts at the, this is like the beta testing phase, you know, where you Mm. got the prototype. The the Europeans is the prototype of 400, 400 hurdle doubling. And Femke Bowl is our test subject. I'm excited to see how it turns out. This is a good pick. I'm excited about it too. I love doubles. It's interesting that this is a week long meet and they're able to accommodate this double. And yet we're still going to have this long process to figure out if we can do it for 2024 when the meet is much longer. It should tell us that we should make the double possible. I don't know if it's going to change my opinion about whether or not McLaughlin can do it because it's a totally different uh, athlete and totally different competition, Olympics versus European championships. But I like that she's going for it. And that's what this should be about because Femke Bowl versus the best European 400 meter hurdlers is a foregone conclusion. We know how that's going to go. So she takes the difficulty level and she cranks it up a notch and says, I'm going to add in the open quarter too. Because you could even say Femke Bull versus the best 400 meter runners in Europe is not even a question of what is going to happen because we saw how fast she ran when she ran the flat 400. So individually, she's not challenged, but then you put them together and it becomes 
something that we all want to watch because it's a great athlete pushing themselves. So this is making the most of the type of competition that's available to her, which is why I really like this move and I really like this pick. Thank you. So you give uh, so you give this great. What's the draft grade you give on this pick? Again, A, an a. a plus. This an is an A. This is an A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, over in the chat, Joe says Britton Wilson and SECs did the double. That's true. That's a good point. I stand corrected. Uh, a little different because it's not a. Actually, it's not with that the four much by different. Four. And she did. And work. Anthony she adds in that she ran out of four by four. Didn't, yeah. uh, I mean that Brit I remember I did say when she did the SEC thing, I said that was the greatest performance in track and field of like the past ten years or something. Didn't I say something oh, the like past that? Decade? The past decade. Past decade. Sounds like something. So I've only been watching track for a decade. Um about de decade ish. Decade ish. Decade plus. Yeah, Brent Wilson, that is a good reference. But at the end of the day, Femke Bold doing it at a almost global championship, which is Europeans. It's going to be something we can see. We're going to see her win. And then we're all going to want to say, Sydney, like, hold my beer, right? What's the phrase? Whatever. She's going to be like, all right, my turn to follow that up. Yeah. So, uh, Warholm did it at the U European U23s in 2017. Gold in the formula hurdles and then silver okay, in the okay. 400. Now we're going, all right, now we're going a little too deep into the – just on the Wednesday, under the age of 28 plus minus 14. He did it in a meet. He did it in a meet is what I'm saying. Who cares what the name of the meet is? He did it in a meet. I had a memory of Warholm doing it. I didn't realize it was that far back. But good pick for you. Let's see. My next pick. You're on the clock is on. The clock, on the clock. is on. I'm going to go with another return. That's going to be the theme of my draft and i'm gonna go with marcel jacobs now there's a lot of risk with this pick because this, this could be a bad you don't know pick, what's bro. gonna happen <laughs> this this could this could be nothing or it could be something great we, we we don't know maybe he comes back and runs nine eight maybe he didn't even run who knows but field's pretty good a, a win would be significant when you look at who else is in uh this field prescott hughes are in there the downside, the risk, is I don't know if he's going to run. Don't know if he's going to run. But I'm willing to make that jump because at the very least, it's interesting to see what he does. Because even if he comes back and he's not 9-8 Marcel Jacobs, but he's able to get a medal, I still think it's interesting because, again, we have, all right, he's on the comeback trail. Let's keep an eye on him for 2023. So my second pick. Marcel Jacobs, will he come back in the 100? Um, um, is this a quote from Marcel Jacobs here? Marcel is the Olympic gold medalist, and he is here to win, but is not a race to be taken lightly. Is he talking about himself in the third person? <laughs> I hope so. Then that makes me want to pick him even more. I'm not sure. If he I mean, has shifted really... to third person, Marcel, then we're talking about a whole other caliber of athlete. So you, you truly think he's going to run? I mean, took no, I have no idea. I have no idea. No, I, I'm not confident at all. No, to be honest. <laughs> Why would you no, draft it's it? Just, just sometimes you got to take risks out there. Sometimes you got to – listen, maybe the Sixers should have drafted Bo Cruz. Instead, he went to the, the Celtics, right? Yeah. Now that's a fictitious right. movie about basketball, not the same thing as a 100-meter runner at the European Championships, but – I looked at what was remaining. I'm going to – I because I also think it's not a pick that he's going to win, right? He, he doesn't need to win in order for this to be a good pick. If he doesn't compete at all, bad pick. But if he goes there and at least shows us where he's at and we get a good gauge on where Marcel Jacobs is in August of 2022, then I think it's a good pick. So it's not a bet on him blowing it out of the water running an amazing time and everyone's saying, man, what would have happened if he was in you, you know, healthy in Eugene? It's more just, we're curious about where he is. We're curious about how serious the injury is. And this should tell us something about that. See this quote looks like his coach has confirmed he's running free. He's having fun. The workouts yep, yep. are promising. If we are here in Munich, it is because he's fine and can compete. 
ooh, he is fine. When someone tells you they're fine, they are not fine. Mm. Well, you know I'm going to take right, that Kevin? as a positive. No, I'm like this fine. It's like that means you're mad if you're fine. No, I, what, what? That's a strange way to go through life. No, I like it. I will take I'm that fine. instead if he's there. Listen, he the reason why, not just with him, but with Warholm and with some of these other athletes, you'd have to feel good about them competing because – once you don't do Worlds, no one's going to wonder why you're not at Europeans. I mean, people might be disappointed if you're not at Europeans. But I don't think you travel to the meet, get ready to compete, put your name in the entries if you're just going to scratch. It's not like Worlds where you put your name out there and then, okay, things didn't come together. I'm not going to do it. Like, they have every incentive to not compete. So if they are on the start list, I do feel confident. Again. But him being on the start list, no guarantee. If he sizzles out in the first round and runs like he did in Eugene, then this is not a good pick. But if he shows us something, then I think it's fair. Um, all right, before you go to your next pick, update from the chat. We're talking about 400, 400 hurdle doubles. Uh, Thomas says, Danny Harris of Iowa State in 1985 ran the 400, 400 hurdle double and won both of the Big 8 conference meet. So <laughs> I forgot about that one. Let's get Big one 8, here. shout out, Big 8. Big 8, uh, uh, man. Colt, can you name the members of the Big Eight? Colt? I can try. Uh, Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas Tech, Texas A and M. Texas uh, Tech might be wrong. Texas Oklahoma Tech might State? be. Wrong. It Did should be Missouri. State? No, no. Missouri should be in there. Oh. Oklahoma State should be in there. Did you say Iowa State? I think I. I think I did very poorly. Well, literally, the guy he mentions went to Iowa State, so I think he should be in there. Hey, we should yeah. count that. We should count that. <laughs> it was Iowa State, Nebraska, Missouri, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Colorado. So no Texas team. So no, yeah, no, no, no Texas. Yeah, I do remember the Big Eight. I remember Missouri. It's a being Big there. Eight podcast, no, officially. All right, your turn. What's your pick? All right. If you're going to say- do this. What? Let me give some possibilities of who's left. You have Asher Smith in the one and the two going against Ken Bungie. You have Laura Muir in the 15, Hodgkinson in the eight, and Mondo, of course. But you can pick whatever you want. You can go to a different event as well, too. If you're going to take flyers, I think we're going to have a run on flyers. It's fine. That plays right into my hands. Let's just go for it. Why not? It's the stupidest event. You never know what you're going to get. Maybe we'll just oh, no. get some crazy, crazy Uh-oh. race. He's doing it, folks. He's I'm doing going it. with the men's 800 at the European Championships. This going with is it. the meat. Uh, I mean, we have Robert, Benjamin Robert of France. He's the top seed. You have athletes like Tony Van Diepen, um, Patrick Dobek, who is a world champ, Olympic medalist. Um, obviously, you still have... Yeah. Whiteman in there because he's coming down in distance. Yeah. Um, but this is about Whiteman, right? Crazy. I mean, it's this about, about Whiteman, Whiteman, but maybe I think Robert could surprise us. He's run 143 this year. Maybe he has a crazy run and he runs 142 or something. I mean, that's not going to happen. Sure. But I just want – I want him on – I want the 800 on my team because I want a reason to watch <laughs> it. And I'm just hoping – magic of all magic happens and i'm going for it so yeah i'm going with the men's 800 as my next pick of it. races to look forward to. i want the Why 800 not? on my team is a bold statement from gordon mack yeah to me it's all about whiteman not in terms of he's gonna dominate but i think that's the story the story is whiteman because it's disappointing he's not racing against Jakob. so at the very least you want to see him take care of business here in the eight he is a good 800 meter runner and these guys are good. They're definitely beatable because it's the men's 800 this year. And everybody looks beatable with the ex- recent exception, I guess, of a manual career. But everybody else can be beat. I don't even, if you had to put tiers out there for the men's 800, it'd be the most confusing like document you've ever produced. Um, it would not be a very fun infographic at all to try to come up with. So I think Whiteman should be in a way should be considered the favorite don't even though his seed time you know his season's best is, is way down there do you think that's fair i don't know if he should be the favorite i think robert should be the favorite i mean whiteman's run 144 one 
It's not too far off yeah. Robert's. But like, time. I don't know. Robert has yeah. been running the 800. He's been getting, he's been going through the, through the rounds. He's like used to that distance. Whiteman hasn't been running that distance often. So I feel like there might be a little bit of an advantage there. Whiteman might, for some, like for a 50 meter stretch, may think he's running a 1500 and then all of a sudden it's over. But hold on though. You just said that he got a big win where? In what event? The 1500. A no, a thousand. thousand in Monaco. So he's, he's trending down. Yeah, he's trending down. If you can, if you can keep track of where you're at on the track in the thousand, I think the 800 is no sweat. A thousand, I feel like would be kind of confusing. It's like, wait a minute, one to go, lap and a half to go. I just think he's obviously on a bit of a roll right now. And even though he's not an 800 meter specialist by any means, you have to pay attention to the fact that he's been winning these races and taking on top flight competition. And also, it's let's not pretend that the rest of the field is is Rodisha right here. This is just it's wide open. I mean, yeah, Robert had that one race where he busted through. The middle uh, two occasions, Twal got what sixth at Worlds. So go back medalist last year, but non-factor this year. I just there's not a long list of people here who you could come up with. Like I'm definitely certain this guy is gonna beat Jake Whiteman. Maybe we bring back the prediction contest. How many people you think could get the final <laughs> of the men's 800 euros? I'm not even gonna bother creating that yeah. document. Okay. Right, who are you picking? So I had to add that one for you. I'm going to go Mondo. I went with a couple question mark picks coming off of injuries and with my first two picks with Warholm and Jacob. So I'm going to go the other direction now and go with a sure thing. And we'll see if he can break the world record. We'll see if he can do another flip. You look at how much he cleared it by in Eugene. You figured it's just matter of opportunity and the conditions cooperating for Mondo. And that's why I picked him. World record. You got to feel good about it, right? I mean, if there were betting odds on world record or not, wouldn't, wouldn't yes be the favorite for this? I think so, yeah. I think yes would be the favorite every time because he's clearly much better than the current world record. Like, yeah. He has, but he's just, there's no purpose of going much higher than the world record. You only need to go a centimeter at a time. So, when is the last time Mondo has lost the pole vault? Okay, so he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, he's won 15 pole vaults this year. Okay, so his last loss was August. 2021. So he's won 18 in a row. His last loss I was remember looking at the Diamond League yeah. in S- Switzerland. He got fourth. No, no, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I remember looking this up, and it didn't go back as far as I thought it did. <laughs> I would have thought he was undefeated all the way through. Okay, I have a question about Mondo. The guy is still a kid. He old is he? He is... 22. 22 years old. Kid. Yeah, yeah, kid. I mean, maybe he's not a kid. Yeah, he's not a kid. I take that back, Mondo. I apologize. You're a man. Got to uh, pay extra to rent a car, though, in the U.S. Yes, under 25, pay extra to rent a car. So. Can't run for president yet for another 15 years or so, so he's still got time. No. Yeah. Anyway. Um, president of Sweden, maybe. Should we be concerned that Mondo <laughs> might get bored and retire early? I'm looking up how old you have to be the president of Sweden. Oh, 40? Just thinking of other careers he can go into. Yeah, 18 years from now. You know, let's, let, I'm going to ask the question again. He is so good. He is so much better. It's like, where's the joy now? He's broken the world record. He's experienced that feeling. What's the difference between vaulting 622 and 621? It's like, whatever. It's the difference is sentiment. Yeah, yeah. He's already, like, accomplished, like, round number barriers right is he really going to be like i can't believe i vaulted 630 i don't i think or 625 i feel like that's just going to be kind of like the same as 
any other world record. There's no one pushing him. Is there a situation where he'll, you know, pull a uh, a Megatron or Barry Sanders and just be like, I'm out and uh, retire way before he actually needs to retire? This is where I feel a bit of empathy for him because if he was in another event that had a crossover, at least on non-championships years, he could do something else. And, yeah. hey, I'm going to run the flat 400 or I'm going to do the triple jump now that I'm doing the long jump. It's tough for him to cross over. So I, I feel – and him and Sydney are similar like age-wise too, right? They kind of yeah. – in terms of the label prodigy was slapped on to both of them pretty early on. Mondo started vaulting so early that obviously he got to that. He's in a level of his own right now, but he, he entered the elite level much earlier than most people did. So if you yeah. figure you have, you know, X amount of years at your prime, I think his clock started sooner, but the impression I get from him is, he wants all of the marks and he wants to put the world, he seems in, incredibly competitive and he wants to put that world record completely at a distance. And the good thing about the pole vault is you always have, you know, yourself to compete against. You can say that in other events too. You can always compete against the clock, but if you're running a 5,000 and you're just, it's just, it's hard to get it going. <laughs> all by yourself or even even an event on the track an 800 right if you're that much better than everybody else it's tough pole vault i think he's gotten used to the fact that he doesn't need to jump as high as he as he does to win but he's holding himself to this higher standard so i would be worried just because he can't really take a break and do a different event if he did that would be awesome <laughs> like i'm all for just putting mondo in the 100 if he wants to run the 100 a couple times um or or the hurdles or something like that but I, but I do think he's wired in a way, and the pole is set up in a way where he he could dominate for a really long time and not get bored. It's kind of yeah. Fun I mean, I hope he doesn't too. get bored. I'm just you know. Here, here's the he's thing about the pole vault. Right, but here's the thing about the pole vault, and here's the thing about where Mondo is at. This is where I should have started my argument. It's got to be a cool position to be in, to know that every time you PR you get a world record. And it's also a cool position to be in because of the way they analyze the data to know that you can exceed what your PR is. Because we've all seen the video. We all saw by how much he cleared it. So he knows for a fact that he can go higher. You can't really do that in many other events to know for sure, okay, I can go and exceed my mark. And he also knows that literally every time he does it, it's a huge deal. They bring out the novelty checks. People go crazy. It's a headline. Like That's pretty excited. There's not many people in that position competing right now to where, you know, they have the ability every single time out to do that. I will say one fun thing he could do. He, he could be the first man ever to make his opening height six meters. Right. He can do I'm fun gonna, stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm going to come in at six meters. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it's a situation where, and there'll, there'll be a point certainly when he slows down, but right now it just, every time he competes, you're thinking, all right, there's a good chance that this gets broken. You don't really think that way or in the, in the history of track and field, there's really not that many athletes that you think about, okay, for sure it's going down or there's a huge chance of it going down. Sydney. Yeah. But then even Sydney, when she ran in Hungary this year, you're thinking, all right, I don't think she's going to run faster than 50.6, right? Like that has to slow down. Whereas Mondo could enter any sort of big meet, small meet, doesn't matter. He could show up to your all-comers meet this summer. And if the standard goes up as high as he needs it, like, he could break that record. Because it's just, it doesn't feel, it, it's not competition dependent at this point by any stretch. Yeah. Your pick. Anyway. Oh, it's my turn? Yep. All right, now we're trying to... We're in the second, third round of our draft. 
This is where you're trying to find the gems. The third and fourth. Third and fourth round. All right. I guess I... Mm, I don't know. I don't like any of these picks, I'm going to be honest. No disrespect, but I just don't like this pick. But I'm going to go... I'll, I'll go Keely Hodgkinson. She's had a... You know... She is... We forget how young she is. And she's just had a few unlucky situations. She had the Maramora situation at Commonwealth Games. She almost was able to take down a Thingmo, but a Thingmo held her off. If maybe there had just been a little bit of a difference of strategy, she could have maybe out-leaned Thingmo. Mm-hmm. I mean, this will be her moment to be able to at least of the, have these three championship-style races. She at least gets one of the wins. It will be weird because... Yeah. She will get the win because the two people she lost to aren't in the race in Marimora from Kenya and a thing Mo from USA. But a win is a win, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, the famous Vin Diesel used to say, doesn't matter if you win a, a global championship or a European championship. Winning is winning. Right? That was the that's phrase. That's the quote. In the movie? No. That's, that's, some, in, that's a direct in quote. Mile. Yeah, that's from the first movie. No, no, it wasn't Inter Mile. It wasn't Inter Mile. It was <sighs> Commonwealth. Or Europeans, a win is a win. Yeah, that's what it was. Gotcha. So, uh, Kelly Hodgkin's skin, uh, it's going to be too fast, too furious for the rest of the European athletes, and she's going to win. And <laughs> says she's my pick. <laughs> that would have been my remaining pick, pretty much for the exact same reason. Riki's in this race, R- Renel uh, Lamont is in this race, but Hodgkinson should get this done. And you're right, it, you get a medal around your neck. I know they don't all count the same, but that's got to feel good after getting three consecutive silver medals. It's interesting her season. She goes from almost pulling off what would have been considered a large upset at Worlds to then getting upset herself. And I I always had her in that tier by herself. She was in tier two by herself with a little bit of distance to tier one at the beginning of the year which you could say all right, maybe that closed a little bit based on how well she did indoors and Mo not running 155 all the time. And then, but then Mary Mora came up as well too, which closed her down from the other side. So then you had this weird back and forth here, this high and low where two silver medals that she got, but I'm sure she felt completely different about both of those silver medals. Now, it's the 800. That's going to happen, but... And that just shows you nothing is permanent within that event, within the sport, right? You can be in this spot that you think you're entrenched in. And then in one, one moment, you're, you're moving up. And the next moment, you're moving down. But neither of those people are here, <laughs> to your point. So she, can get, she should get this thing done. She should get this win. And you're right. She's still so early in her, her career. If her and a thing, Mo and Mary Mora, continue on for a, a little while, We'll we'll mention 2022, but it won't be the whole and 2021, but it won't be the whole story. That's for sure. Like it'll just be the beginning chapters in what we think is going to be a series of epic races. So yeah, she should go out, get the win, get that medal around her neck, hear the national anthem, and then use that to fuel her going forward. But it is something I am interested in because. You don't, she's run, like in Tokyo, she exceeded expectations, wouldn't you say? Like 155? Yes. That was pretty yeah. nuts. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. War, worlds, she exceeded expectations, wouldn't you say? She almost won the thing. She exceeded expectations there. So the I guess only, so, yeah. 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 Of, of these three championships, the only one where she didn't exceed expectations was Commonwealth. And she still managed to get silver, and she lost to somebody who's like an emergent athlete in the event. So. It's not as if you say, well, what's, what's the, her deal at major championships? No, she's fine at major championships. She just has had really good competition. But this one, she certainly should win. All right. And then is it my pick again? No, you don't get two picks in a row. You only get one. We each get one more. Well, I don't, I, there's only one other person I'm willing to pick. So if you pick it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to relinquish the rights it, to my final pick. Is it is it Muir? No, I'm not picking Muir. Okay, I'm picking. There Muir. has been a trade. 
Can I trade my pick okay. to you and then you get two picks? Because I just want, I only want one more pick. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, I'm going Dina Asher Smith. All right. Her versus the clock. I want to see. I feel like she's coming into great form. She had a great world championship. I want to see if she can just lower her PB. I want to see her run a fast 200. I want to see her run a fast 100. I want to see it be a 100 and a 200 where we need to start saying her name more often when we're talking about the other fast sprinters. Because if we're being honest, you know, a lot of the talk has just been Jamaicans and the Americans. Jamaicans and Americans maybe throw in a Christine and Boma here and there. But that's all it's been. She comes out here and runs, you know, 10 6 high, 10 7 low, 21 7 type race, 21 6 high type race. Then we got to like put some respect on the Dean Asher Smith name. I mean, we always had respect on it. I think you were kind of limiting the pool to whoa, Jamaicans whoa, 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 in the U.S. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's a, on me. I'm you like, always this do this is a proud Dean like, Asher Smith podcast. To... I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, it's no, it's it's. You know, Jackson and Fraser Price and Thompson are out rightfully get the get the recognition, but I think if you looked at that, by the time we got down to that 200 field, it was clear. I thought she was going to get in the top five. Um, but I think she had, you know, she obviously getting that bronze medal is huge in yeah. that field was, was, was huge. So I agree with you. All right. You gave me two picks. So I get a bonus pick, which is great because I picked, um, something a little bit off the board that you're going to like, but first I'll talk about Laura Muir 1500, right? She did the double at, at Commonwealth. She got a medal at worlds field. Isn't that great, but I think actually her. Gordon, her PB is five seconds better than everybody. Her, se- her season's best is seven seconds better than everybody. So I just want to see the domination because she's not one to sit and kick either. So I just I want to see her kip yeg on this field, basically. My other pick, my other pick, you might remember him from U20s. He upset Tobogo in the 200. He competes uh, for Israel. I'm talking about 18-year-old Blessing Afrifa, who ran sub-20, 19.96 in Cali, Colombia, to win that race. He's entered again in the 200 here. He is the top seed by virtue of that time. And I think this is going to be a really interesting test for him because. It's a senior championship, not juniors anymore. There's two other, uh, sorry, one other guy who's run under 20 this year in ZZ of France. Uh, Nathaniel Mitchell Blake's run 20 0. But you just want to see, you want to see that second, third performance from an emergent star. You know, Columbia obviously at altitude makes things quicker. Tobogo is more of a 100 guy than a 200 guy. So there's a lot of reasons why you think, all right, Let's pump the brakes on the expectations here. Let's not, he's not gonna he's not gonna blow out the field here, is he? But I, I just want to see him again. I want to get another look at him because he is so new to the scene. I like that pick. It'd be fun. Let's see him run 1990 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because remember you know, before that the 200 needs be- even more great runners. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> we need to add more to well, the list. And young and young runners too. Remember, he yeah. wasn't he PR'd three times at U twenties. His PB yeah. was the like twenty point five going into it. So, I just I want to see what he can do for an encore, and he'll have people around his pace to push him. He'll have similar setup to Cali in terms of rounds. So, Afrifa from Israel in the two hundred. I want to see it. That that'll be a fun one. So I have a, it's great that I got an extra pick. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I wanted Dean Asher Smith, so. We'll see how it works. Let me add these to the list here. Kevin, and then I'm getting, uh, we're, we're judging these. Next Has there ever been a time when people on a podcast who did a little competition, a draft, ever actually <laughs> went, like went back and like analyzed the results? 
I feel like I listen to a lot of sports uh, podcasts where they're like, all right, we're picking our over unders for the season, and we never know. Yeah. Like six months go by, we're like, wait, who won that podcast? We'll never know. I think I think you do because you always make the spreadsheets to keep That's track true. of the picks. But how are we it depends if score this result. Like, what's the definition of winning this pot this draft? Colt gets to pick. Colt is the arbiter. Mm. Most golds, maybe? Most golds from who you picked? But that's well, not where we even picked. If, we weren't picking they would win. Yeah, we were picking if yeah. it was a good race. Interest Just most them. exciting. It, <laughs> was it a fun race, gonna, yes or no? <laughs> we're going to send Colt like the 10 clips that come from this, of these races, and he's going to have a, one of those. He's gonna have, no, no, no. He's going to have one of the dials. It's, he's going to measure his excitement. Oh, okay. So he's like, like, man, a, like a, Should we hook him Warhol. up to like a... Uh, like, like a heart like rate, rate monitor cool. machine, so it's like heart rate, EKG heart rate monitor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or we could do it like the presidential debate things, where they're they're you know in real time pushing the dials about whether or not they approve or disapprove. Like, do you approve of this Jakob Ingebrigtsen five thousand? Yes or no? I I think it'll be pretty clear because I'm going to win by a lot. But yeah, we can do that as well too. Fair enough. All right, Man. what else we got? So we got Good. um. We had the marathon this morning, so by Wednesday's show, we'll have the men's and women's 100 wrapped, the men's five, so we'll know about Jakob. Um, yeah, so all that will be in the books in addition to some prelim stuff before Wednesday. And then by Friday, we'll have a whole bunch because this thing wraps up on, on Sunday. And then obviously Monday we'll have to talk about the men's 800 because that's still one of the last events. Of course. Oh, What's exactly. going to happen if they run if they run one forty seven in the eight hundred? I think you automatically lose the draft. I think that's how it works. Okay, that's the. Uh, all right, yeah, fine. That's the poison pill. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> sure. If they run one forty seven for the win. I will. I will forfeit. I will retire from the game. <laughs> Nobody ever went broke. Do you know what that'd be great? Yeah. Imagine if like a star athlete. You know, they always, like, they make their bold predictions. But, of course, every star athlete thinks they're going to win. Yeah. But they, like, you know, I guarantee, they always make the guarantees. I guarantee, like, Tim Timbo, I guarantee we're going to win the rest of the games this college season, right? Yeah. The star athlete was like, I guarantee I will win this championship or this game. And if we don't, I will retire the next day. I want to hear an athlete mm. say that. And then I want to see it not work out for them and then have to retire because they made a stupid <laughs> bet over a – regular season football game and then they'll say and they'll say just kidding no they have to stick to the word they'd be like yeah i was so confident we would win and we did not so i'm retiring that would be great oh i would love that to happen uh tamp eagle says where's the sub pod usa versus uk meet like usa versus ussr in the 1980s yeah we're gonna do it this week we're doing it again it was my bad they didn't get done before do you want to do that us versus uk we can do that. We can do someone else. Yeah. US, we, who came up with that idea? Was that just this is the first time yeah, I'm hearing about that? In the chat. That's the we idea we're doing? The relays. We can. All right. Maybe we do this. Maybe we do half Maybe that, do half something else. No, no, no. We come up with a, what four countries would you invite to make the best quad beat? Okay. Only four. And, okay. But we can pick, let's do 10 events maybe. So you can change. Yeah. You can run the six hundred and stuff if you want. If you're in love with a thousand. We can run the that. Like you, you invite four countries to your meet. Any events? What would you do? Within reason. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to do like crazy stuff. You want to do that? No mystery races. No mystery races. No one hour on the track races. Like let's keep it relatively. And we're, when are we holding this meet? The meet takes place, well, on a, like theoretically. Yeah. It, it like would replace world championships next year. It'd be that important. It's going to be in Tel in 2023? Yeah. No. I guess, yes, sure. Yeah, let's do that. It's going to be held in 2023. Okay. On, on Earth 2 is where it's taking Earth place. Earth 2.0. And, 2023. and on, this, on this planet, it's the most important thing going. Do you know what pop. I also liked? I, I saw, I saw Noah Lyles is going to be at Europeans, which I think is awesome. 
I think more people should go to other countries and other continental championships. And one I thought about in particular who should go to every world championships and should be there just to watch the men's 100 final. Like Bolt should be at every 100 final. And then when they cross the line and the time goes up, he should just pump his fist and then walk out of the stadium. Walk out. Every single time. <laughs> just walk out. Every single time. All right, we're good. We're Still great. got it. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Don't he you like stands in the exit. He like stands in like underneath the, the exit sign, like in the, the tunnel. He's just like watching it, looks at the clock. All right, we're still good. And then gets in the car and heads home to a party or something. Yeah. That'd be a badass. You like that idea? That. I like that idea. I just think, I just think the we visual should have of more... him seeing them cross the finish line and immediately walking out of the stadium would be hilarious. He just goes like this. We're good. Ah, I got it. Kids. These kids. <laughs> Taps his watch a couple times. But everybody. Like, there should be more dignitaries there. Just in general, don't you think? Yeah. Dignitaries. Like, I like, like, I like Lyles. Dignitary? Just, an, I mean, an important person within the sport or somebody who's – the people who are currently competing, I think would be fun too. Yeah. But, like, if, if Dos Santos is running a Formula Hurdle race and just having like, – like, Dos Santos should show up to Europeans too. And watch Warhol. And he's he's a very good natured guy, so he'd probably like give him a high five and stuff. He's like, I'm not saying all of it needs to be contentious. It just would be. And Lyles is obviously a guy who's uh, well liked by pretty much everybody out there. I I just think it'd be more fun to see the superstars at other events. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you see NBA players at the NBA finals, right? You know, they're yeah, in the press yeah, exactly. box, in the suites and stuff. So. They all go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then if you have a like if Jakob's going for you know the mile record or Chariot's going for the mile record, like you have El Garouge there. I think that makes sense. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, where you can that would do be it. Very I think cool. it'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be cool. I just, I just was when he said he was going to Europeans, I thought he was joking, and then I saw that. He posted it again that said he's actually doing it, and I kind of like it, especially well, after probably, you it win makes gold. sense because he's probably in Europe for the Diamond League circuit, yeah. and he's yeah, like, "What am course. I going to do this week? Oh, I'll go watch a track meet." Yeah, I know, but that's why I like it, and the fact that yeah. it's it's not like he can compete, so he's not going to get all these questions. Oh, well, why aren't you running? He's like literally not eligible to compete, but I like that he's still going. He's like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna check out this meet." And see what's what. You think he'll they'll give him access to the warm up track? Do like some track workouts throughout the week? Yeah, I think they should sneak him on just as a joke, and he runs the first like fifty, and then he's just just kidding, <laughs> and stops. You should, or he should, some country. What like what's like the worst uh, four by one country there? Be like yo, just like renounce your citizenship for like twenty four hours, and then you, we'll give it back to you. Here's a passport. Yeah. We just need you to run third <laughs> leg for us. I thought you were going to say he runs two legs for him. Or two legs. Yeah, he could probably run two legs. Yeah. They're short. They're short a person. Someone gets hurt, and you, you're able to use the Lyles card. He's like running in, in like glasses and like a fake beard. Like, <laughs> the most so like... <laughs> he no, like a, that he puts on like no a heavy fun. accent. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely <laughs> he's definitely not Noah Lyles. Yeah. I just I – th- I think it's cool. I, I think it's cool that he's going. It's uh, Because you grow up like watching track and you're used to going to these track meets and I don't know, track athletes watching other track athletes compete was just sort of par for the course because yeah. number one, they took so long, but also it's like, you know, everybody has friends on other teams or th- this event's going on this day and just like seeing other fast people around. I always thought was a cool part of it. Yeah. That's it. That's the pod. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning right, in. We did it. Yeah, thanks to Colt for producing another one in the books. They said it couldn't be done. Uh, We'll do a subscriber pod this week. So if you haven't become a member, you should do that. If you haven't subscribed, you should do that. Uh, Any last words, Gordon? Anything we're forgetting? No. Um, What's the name of the the spider spray I need to buy? Do that today. Well, you you need essential oils, and they recommend peppermint. peppermint. Essential oils, yeah. Peppermint essential oils. You know. Spraying your whole apartment with peppermint might not be a bad idea, just as a general rule. Hey, hey, are you, are you hey, trying I'm, to apply I'm something? leaving it there. That's all I'm going to say. 
it's a, it's a lovely scent for some people. Hey, Maybe some people. I used to have a smelly area in my home and all of my shoes, but I threw them all away and I bought four new pairs of shoes. So now I have no more smelly shoe area in my home. Sometimes you, you need someone just to smell and tell you. No one was telling me, but then someone told me. And I'm like, Whoa, oh, hold on. Okay. Do you want to go into this in depth? Well, no. You said my shoes smell in Eugene. You never said they smell in Austin. Okay, but if they're the same shoes, it doesn't matter where you yeah, bring no, them. Yeah, no, no. carry it's the different. smell with them. No, you, you should have told me in Austin. We have a bigger area, more square footage. Yeah, so it so spreads the, out. So it's not as potent. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell this? Do you want to go into more depth on that story about why you got rid of the shoes? No, we don't need to do that. We'll, you sure? We'll, maybe we'll save it for the sub pod. <laughs> really? Will you tell the story in the sub pod? Please say you'll tell the story in the sub pod. Yeah, I'll tell the story in the sub pod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I it's can tell great... the story in the sub pod. Yeah, that's, I can tell the story in the sub pod. Guys. Because it's, it's not going to get out. Is... It's in a, it's, it'll stay in, the, in a small circle. Let me just tell you guys, it's a great story. I would not lie to you. This is better than the ice cream melting as he talked to Jerry Schumacher story by a factor of 10. Colt, back me up on this. Good story, right? Great story. Worth subscribing okay. for. Why Gordon got rid of his shoes? Not just because they, well, it's related to the smell, but yeah. there's a twist. It's a twist. Subscribe and find out. <laughs> All oh, right. my goodness. Now, now, now I'm pumped for the subscriber pod. I know. Maybe I, I can ask. To this. No, it's in. It's in there. It's in. That and the uh, and the four the four countries. You know. You know what? Yeah, I can I can talk about it now. I'll talk about it in the subscriber. Pod. I'm talking myself into you guys, it. You guys Just notice how normally Gordon is like cool to talk about everything. Notice his reluctance here. That should tell you how good this information is going to be. <laughs> he does not want this getting out. So this is this is gonna be a terrific show. All right, low track podcast at uh, gmail.com. Thomas says, hey, Gordon, I thought you were going to get rid of the whiteboard behind you and redecorate. I am. I'm doing that this week. I have, I, I, I finalized the idea. I need to go to, uh, where is it? Like a Kinko's or what's going to call it? What are you going to do? I'm printing something. I'm printing a giant be... picture of something and I'm putting it right here. Is it a bolt dancing to your... I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you what thing. it is. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm not telling you. I know, but if it's something I stupid, know. I need to know because this impacts me. I need to make sure you're not embarrassing yourself. Because you're going to have to look at it? No, because everybody's looking at it. It's not going to be invisible. I'll tell you what it is off the pod. Let me hang up. Okay. I'll tell you. Subscribe, subscriber pod? All right. See you guys. Yeah, well, maybe we'll debut Bye. it on the subscriber pod. <laughs> no, because everyone's going to see it. So yeah. It'll be this week.